Hey everybody, welcome back to Young Engineers of Today. I hope you're ready to continue with um, Raspberry Pi Sense Hat, because that's what we're going to do. Um, I believe you guys are like 40% uh, of the way through the program, at least uh, the game that you guys were working on. At least most of the effort has been done, but not so much of the length of the program. But anyway, so we're going to finish that off today. Uh, that is, like, most assuredly not going to take the entire class. So we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, at the end, there are some suggestions and stuff like that to create sort of games and programs of your own and expand upon the one that we're working on now. Um, and I'm going to challenge you guys with that stuff, to, you know, to think about it and everything like that. At the very least, I'm not going to require you guys to make anything right now i mean if uh once we finish the program if you've got other stuff that you need to go off and do then that's fine um however if you're curious and we get to that point and you want to spend a little bit of time just sort of uh brainstorming something and you want a little bit of guidance with it or something like that i'll hang out on the channel um or excuse me on the the class so that you guys have you know, somebody to talk to about your idea or whatever. But without any further ado, let us continue. I believe you guys had just gotten started on the uh, the play loop. So that's the the wild play, and that's going to be um, basically where all the repeating parts of the program are going to be contained, uh, because everything leading up to it has been setting up the colors, setting up the arrows, initializing our variables. And a little introductory message, which gets the player um, familiar with uh, what the, the core mechanic of this game is, which is to keep the arrow pointing upwards. Then, once that's all done, then we get started on the core gameplay loop. That is, that is a, uh, a game dev term, the core gameplay loop. And it's not appropriately applied here, um, but that's fine. So we're going to say while play. And that's how we're going to get started. Just kind of interesting because it's just while play as opposed to while play is equal to true or while play is equal to one or while play is equal to anything. It's just while play. Well, you remember that variables are simply placeholders for values, right? So, I mean, if we're all reasonable computer scientists here and we're looking at what we've got, and in our head we're just replacing variable names with their values, that's what we're doing here, is we're just saying while well, true. And hey, what does that look like? It looks like a forever loop. However, this is not a forever loop. It acts like one until... <laughs> no, it's, it's not. Uh, so Philip brings up a good point. Uh, isn't kind of a bad idea to use rotation as a base mechanic of a game on a wired platform that's movement is restricted by those wires? You're 100% right. Um, <laughs> I am absolutely not debating that point at all. So please don't feel like you're being annoying by saying that or anything like that, because that is that is a completely valid point. Um, it's a little dicey, uh, to be sure, and it's not convenient, also to be sure, but it's an idea that utilizes the uh, accelerometer in the sense hat, as well as the LEDs and all that stuff. So at the very least, um, it's something that, that takes advantage of a lot of the stuff that makes the sense hat unique. So... Yeah, no, you, you're totally right. Um, there are potential solutions, though, if you wanted to make this more um, permanent. Uh, you could always, you know, attach a battery to the bottom of the Raspberry Pi that's, you know, rechargeable. And then that battery could be wired directly into the USB power instead of, you know, like soldered to the board instead of, um, instead of the micro USB power that you've got going on right now. 
And because it's fastened to the bottom of the Raspberry Pi and because it's got such a close connection to the actual power area, it becomes its own little self-contained unit. Then you don't have to worry about wires being hooked up to anything that's stationary or anything like that. But that's if you were really super in love with the idea of a Raspberry Pi that you just kind of tilted so that, you know, the arrow was pointing up. Um, your call as to whether or not that's worth it. I would say for a brand new Raspberry Pi 3, uh, keep it for other things. But that would be that would be a solution. But no, no. Anyway, back to the original point, you, you're, that's a totally valid concern. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't worry about how that came across at all. But that's what we're going to do. <laughs> you like that answer? Satisfactory answer. Um, so yes, this is going to be the beginning of our, core, uh, of our core gameplay updates loop, or update loop. Um, everything inside of while play is going to repeat over and over again. It's pretty straightforward. So we're going to say last angle, which is just a variable that we're making up right now on the spot, is equal to angle. So we're initializing a new variable called last angle, and uh, we're initial or we're excuse me creating a new variable called last angle, and we're initializing it to the value of angle. Hey, Mateo. Um, why are we doing that? You might ask. Well, I'm glad you asked. Now we've got this, while angle is equal to last angle, do a thing. What we're going to do is we're going to say angle is equal to choice, and the choice that we're going to give it is 0, 90, 180, 270. So it's it's the basically the... You can, you can sort of think of it like north, south, east, and west in the sense that they're all quadrants of a circle. Um, however, the, the Raspberry Pi is going to be rolled and pitched as opposed to uh, yawed everywhere. Um, so thinking of it as northwest, south, and east, it's a weird way to say it, um, isn't entirely appropriate, but whatever. So as we can see here, we've got this while loop inside of a while loop. Yo dog, etc. Um, what exactly is going on here? So last play, or excuse me, last angle is equal to angle. So whatever angle is set to, uh, we're going to set last angle to that. Then we're saying as long as angle is equal to last angle, initialize angle with a new value that could be 0, 90, 180, or 270. So it's going to pick one of these randomly and give it to angle. Now here's the trick. It's going to come back up here and check. If angle is equal to last angle, pick another one. Keep doing it until angle is no longer equal to last angle. That way we ensure that each uh, loop, each update loop, um, we have uh, a new angle. That way you know, you're not stuck tilting it in the same direction and stuff like that. It reduces a little bit of the randomness um, insofar as the fact that you know you're going to get something different each time. It reduces a little bit of the unpredictability. but Oh well. So now we're going to sense dot set rotation to that angle, and we're going to sense dot set pixels our white arrow. And I called it I called it arrow white because that's what I called it up here, just to just to differentiate it from arrow red and arrow green. I mean, obviously it was called arrow originally, which differenti differentiates it from arrow red and arrow green by virtue of the fact that it doesn't have a color in its name. Um, but this keeps consistently, excuse, excuse me, consistency, um, which is something that's a little helpful. So now not only do we have three arrows, we've got three arrows that are all initialized with the color names, which sort of makes it a little bit nicer as coders to really kind of read it. So now we're setting the rotation to be angle, and then we're setting the pixels to be the white arrow. Now the thing is, um, when you set pixels, it's always going to be according to this matrix. So it's always going to be the top three E's, or excuse me, the top three are going to be blank, and then the next two are going to be a given color, and then the top three, next top three are going to be blank, and then the next two are going to be blank, and then the then you've got four colors. 
and then blank, and then blank in color, and blank in color, color, blank, color, blank. You get the idea. Um, however, what sense ro uh, set rotation does is it rotates the, the grid on top. So whereas, whoop, don't save. Uh, we've got our we've got our grid of pixels, and we got one, two, three, four, etc. If we uh, let's do let's do a four by four for cleanliness' sake. If we rotate it ninety degrees, then we're going to see that like oh hey, it's still going to be. It's still going to have the same grid that it had up there, except it's going to look like it's going to look like that. So it's still going to draw the exact same grid that it did before, except for the sense hats purposes. Uh, so it's going to look like that, except for the sense hats purposes. But for our purposes as observers, it's going to look like that. So there we go. We've got our we've got our sense hat set rotation and set pixels. Oh, and then we're gonna sleep for pause seconds. That is to say, three seconds. Then, once it's done pausing, we're going to get the acceleration of the sense hat. That's just simply a comment for myself. Well, by, I say for myself, for us as programmers. So we could always come back to the code later or somebody else could read it and they would understand why we're doing what we're doing, like what the purpose of this next bit of code is, um, why we got the show, the show message here. Um, begin main update loop tells us that this while play loop is going to be our main update loop. So we're going to want to check that out. Uh, that kind of a thing. So get the acceleration of the sense hat is going to start with acceleration is equal to sense dot get accelerometer raw. So we're getting a variable, we're calling it acceleration, and we're setting it to sense dot get accelerometer underscore raw. So we're getting the raw values from the accelerometer now, which will tell us the acceleration in a given direction. Makes sense. Next, we're going to have x, y, and z. These are going to be our three axes, and it's going to be acceleration x equal to acceleration oops, y, good lord, and acceleration z. Now, to be clear, we don't actually need this last one because if we're doing the game right, um, that should be not part of our equation. But, you know, as it stands, we won't worry about it. We'll just keep it there just for, <laughs> he said as he accidentally deleted it, uh, for consistency sake, we'll keep it there. And then we will round, whoops, uh, x equals round. Also, if you see me just doing like totally loopy things today, uh, I apologize preemptively. I am exhausted. I've had a long few days, and so I am probably not the most energetic that I could be. Not trying to make excuses for it, but I just want you guys to know at least a little bit of like to have some expectations. Temper your expectations. I'm not going to be my normal uh, yelly self, and and maybe maybe some of you are are doing a small dance in your chair for that exact reason. Um, but yeah, so. We're setting X and Y to be rounded versions of themselves. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, um, what this means is X is equal to rounding X to the zeroth decimal place. So if um, the accelerometer spits back, oh, X is equal to 0 0.593816535789001200, etc. Since the first digit was five, um, because that's how rounding works, uh, it's going to round up to x is equal to 1. Not even 
well, I mean, technically 1.0, depending upon the interpreter. But anyway, uh, but just flat out one. It's going to round it to the nearest whole number. That's what the zero is, is the number of decimal places. Since we said zero decimal places will be the, the nearest whole number. And that's in that same, you know, sort of vein, if we get Y and it's 0 0.32391658788400200, or whatever, um, that will round y to be zero because the first digit is less than uh, five. So that's uh, that's always a round down. But yes, so that's that's the rounding function, um, and what that'll do is it'll give us nice ones, zeros, or negative ones for our acceleration values, which are easy to compare um, against the uh, the angles that we're, that we're interested in. So we've got the get the acceleration of the sense hat. We've gotten the acceleration of the sense hats. Next, we're going to just print them out. So prints angle, prints x, and print y. And all prints are is they just print out to the console like you've got over here, or like I've got over here, so that you can see them for debug purposes. They allow you to see quickly and easily what values are going through the Raspberry Pi's head as it's doing these things, so that you know whether or not you're programming things correctly, if your logic is sound and makes sense. Because if you're expecting, you know, um, a negative one here, then you go, oh my goodness, okay, it's it's reading the accelerometer backwards, so I must have everything flipped accidentally or something like that. You know, who knows? Whatever. Anyway, um, it allows you to, to, to look inside the, the, the brains of the program and inside the head and see what's going on. So now, now that we've done that, we're going to check our values and make sure they're correct. So, um, uh, award player point if if they rotated correctly hooray so we're going to say if uh, x is equal to negative one and angle is equal to 180 a we're going to sense dot set pixels plural to arrow green Boom, and we're going to score plus equals one, which is just simply a shorthand for score equals score plus one. That's all that is. Is it's just this is just a faster way of typing this. Um, in fact, it's used for pretty much all of the different um, all the different. Uh, Operands and stuff like that. So we could we could do times equals two, or minus equals four, or divided equals three. But for now, we're just going to do plus equals one because we want to add one to the score. And that's going to be our first if loop, or excuse me, statement. Uh, then we're going to have else if, which is what E L I F is short for. It's short for else if, and all that is is if x or if this first one is not true, then check this one, but only if this one is not true. But uh, only even if this one is not true, it's not like a bucket like else is, which catches everything that doesn't, uh, that doesn't satisfy any preceding if statements. And we'll use an else in a, in a bit. Um, but this is else if. So if this first if isn't true, then check for a second specific condition. Only if this first if isn't true. Because this, this allows for exclusionary stuff. If we did another if here, and we said, uh, for instance, if y is equal to negative 1 and angle is equal to uh, 270. Just as an example, this would still technically work. However, if our x was negative 1 and our y was negative 1, well, it's a little unnecessary, um, but let's say we had two angles. Then these both would be correct. The score would be in, in, incremented twice, and that would just be undesirable. 
So that's why we use else if, which prevents double sort of like if two if statements from from uh, catching and executing, um, but it also gives us the freedom to uh, keep our keep our conditionals a little bit more. Uh, specific. So else if x is equal to 1 and angle is equal to 0. This is the opposite side of the circle from angle being 180. So obviously we want our x to be the opposite of that. So we're going to sense.setPixels arrow green score is plus equal to 1. Boom. Now we get into our y value. So else if y is equal to negative 1 and angle is equal to, I believe it's 270. No, it's 90. Okay. 90. Then sense dot set pixels arrow green. I'm sure you're seeing a pattern here. Score plus equals 1. And else if y is equal to 1 and angle is equal to 270 sense dot set pixels arrow green and score is plus equal to one all right so I, I did type that out a little bit fast but this is the same concept as what we have up here um, we just start out with an else if so else if y is equal to negative one and angle is equal to 90 which is perpendicular to either 180 or zero so that's now why we're checking y instead of x anything that's at a perpendicular angle of these two is going to be the y. Um, but anyway, so if, if y is equal to negative 1 and angle is equal to 90, then we're going to set the arrow to be green. And we're going to add 1 to the score. If y is equal to positive 1 and angle is equal to 270, then we're going to set the, pixel, uh, the arrow to green and add 1 to the score. Um, same basic concept here. This is on the other side of the circle from this, and it's perpendicular from both 0 and 1, or perpendicular to 0 and 180 both. So that's why we're checking the y-axis on that one. Now we're going to have one more else. We're going to have an else, excuse me, as our last conditional. So what do we just do here? Well, this else, this else only runs if none of these ifs and else ifs before it's evaluate to true. And what we've done here is we've established our four conditions in which the player does the right thing. They, they tilt the sense hat corresponding to the arrow direction, and thus they get, they get it right. So these are the, four, the only four situations in which the player can increment, or increment the score and continue the game. Basically, that they can score. Um, any other situation they don't score. So rather than create all of the other situations in which they don't score, which are actually more situations than when they do, we just say else. And it's just, if none of these are true, if none of these are true, then execute the else. We just set the, the arrow to be red and set play to be false. And so now you get an idea of how this forever loop is no longer a forever loop. Because the moment that this is set to be false, well, we look up here, and it's like saying, well, false, except spelled correctly. And suddenly, this loop doesn't execute. So that's how we bust out of our play loop. Finally, we're going to um, set pause times equals 0 0.95, and we're going to sleep for 0 0.5 seconds. So what's going on here? is we're shrinking pause just ever so slightly. We're shrinking it by 5% every cycle because multiplying it by 0 0.95 means it's going to be 0 0.95 times the size, so 95% of the size, um, which is important up here because this sleep pause is how long the player has to react to whatever direction that the arrow is in before the accelerometer accepts their input and says yay or nay. So by shrinking the pause by 5%, Ever so slowly, every single time that this loop runs, the pause gets shorter and shorter, and the player has to react faster and faster to the uh, the uh, prompt provided by the sense hat.
which is another reason why it might just be a terrible, horrible idea to do this on a sense hat that is very much plugged into something stationary like a wall or a computer. Um, and then we sleep for half a second. The sleep for half a second allows us to actually process what's going on here, whether we've got a green arrow or a red arrow, and uh, prepare ourselves mentally for the next round. But these are actually the last two bits of that major loop. From here, we've got a couple more lines of code, but they're not going to be a part of the loop, so they're not going to be indented at all. So we're going to say msg, or message, is equal to your your score was percent %s. And then we're going to close the quotes, space, and then percent %score. And what that does is that uh, that percent %s will automatically get filled with the score variable. Um, it's it's a uh, it's a substitution so that it'll it'll nicely display the score variable no matter what the um no matter what the score value is and then we're gonna we're gonna sense dot show that message so msg scroll speed is equal to 0 0.05 and text color is equal to uh, 100, 100, 100. And that's going to be our not really that blinding white color. Um, and that's actually going to be our program. Uh, it doesn't really work on the emulator. I apologize. I just preemptively, it doesn't, it doesn't really cooperate very well on the emulator unless I have a very different idea of what the X and Y axes are and how they operate on the emulator. Uh, but regardless, um, those of you who are running a physical sense hat at home, uh, it should work. Um, those of you who are running the emulator, you can you can do it anyway, and it should still at least do a thing. It just won't operate exactly the way that you want it to, which is disappointing to be sure. But you know, oh, my sense hat's upside down. Keep ah the arrow pointed pointing up, and then it points, and then we've got some time, and yep, your score. So I already failed it. Um, oh well, not the end of the world. Uh, but. The idea is there. <sighs> and that is our program. I'm going to bring the code back up so that you guys can at least look over the main game or the main uh, update loop. Most of the update loop. I can't get the entire update loop in there, but most of the update loop. Um, give everybody a few minutes uh, and then just go ahead and raise your hand. Uh, if you've created the program and you're at least able to test it out. Um, and if you have any questions about anything, well, then let me know. Like if you want me to show a different part of the code or something like that. Yeah, sure. Here is the bottom. It might actually be a better idea to show the bottom anyway, because... Imagine you guys got more of the top done than you did the bottom. Uh, so I'll keep it down here, actually. All right, hot dang, we got some speed demons are already done. Uh, yours might be doing the same thing mine is, and I think that the X and Y axes are flipped. So if you want to, uh, try fiddling with the with these. Like maybe go like turn these into Ys and turn these into Xs. Um, 
to see if that doesn't fix the issue because that might be that might be what's going on um, you can mess around with those values and see if that doesn't if that doesn't fix it you can also check out the console whenever you run it uh, to see whether or not it lines up with what you've got because if it's if it's spitting out you know uh, e isn't defined uh, okay so you gotta define e so that's why e is the empty value so it's just zero 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 and sorry uh philip when you were saying the top did you mean the very very top of the code or the top of the uh the the play loop very top okay so this is the very top Oh my god, my, my little Mega Man's head is coming off. Don't come off, Mega Man head. Doesn't appear to be getting the acceleration info. Uh, okay, that's an ideal. X and Y are always zero, but Z is always one. Huh. All right, well, mm, oh no, always zero and always one, that's not... Okay, it works now. Excellent. Um, that's not great. Oh, nice. Uh, okay, so do you get... No, because that should always... That would always be zero if... Uh... Yeah, I... If you unplug your Raspberry Pi, uh, Philip, and plug it back in, and then when it's done booting, I know it's going to take a minute, when it's done booting, run this code again. Uh, tell me if you still get 0 for X and Y and 1 for Z. Import anything for the accelerometer? No, you shouldn't have to. It should just be from sense hat import sense hat, and that's enough to have a working accelerometer. And uh, Levi, as far as how you use it is concerned, um, all the game is is so the 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 thing is gonna pop up with an arrow. I could probably use a better color than brown on a black background. It's gonna pop up with an arrow, and you want to point the sense hat so that the arrow is pointing up in the air. So if the sense hat's arrow is pointing this way, you want to rotate the sense hat so that it's it's like that and instead of because the, the arrow the arrow will rotate with it and so it'll be pointing up in the air like that now it's giving you negative 0, 0.0 that's bizarre so at negative 0, 0.0 is something's going on with this with the rounding there's strangeness going on with the rounding strangeness abound um because Instead of rounding, it's can it's tr it's truncating. If it shows a green arrow, it means that you did the right thing. Um, assuming you've got the normal f flow of play, so you get something that tells you, oh, this is what you're supposed to do, and then you get a white arrow, and then you rotate it, and then you get a green arrow. If you white if you get a white arrow and then you rotate it and you get a green arrow, that means that you rotate it in the proper direction. And the sense hat's like, yeah, you did it, have a point. And then it'll, you'll get another white arrow, and then you have to rotate it again, and then get another green arrow, and so on and so forth, until you get a red arrow, which means that you have you have not rotated it satisfactorily. The first message to show up, and then it went blank. No arrow. Uh... Do you have, I guess you must have those. Uh, okay, so the message shows up and then it's blank. I would check your arrow white to make sure that 
that it's set up properly. Um, check and make sure that you set pixels to arrow whites. Oh, sense matte. Nice. Um, keep getting red arrows and orienting it in the direction of the arrow. That is probably because the accelerometer is reading them off of different axes. So what you can do is you can fiddle with your if statements. So swap the x's and the y's. And that might solve your problem. Uh, well, the, the um, so check your uh, check your uh, console output to see how the um, the x and the y values align with the angle that they're looking for. See here how it's the angle is 270, and I've got zero for the x and one for the y, as evidenced by here. Um, as you can see, that's not correct. So. Um, I knew I oriented it correctly, which means that in order for the 270 to be true, the Y needs to be negative one. So we can change that. So we'll change this to X, we'll change this to X, because that means that the Y is dealing off of the 270. And we'll change this to negative one and positive one. And then if we were to run it, See what the sense hat shows us. Pointing up, yes, we get it. Down, okay, so I gotta, I gotta flip it around. Hey, look at that, it's green. And then I flip it around again. Hey, it's green. And then I flip it upwards. Ah, it's red. So that means that our rounding is weird. Okay, uh, so the X and Y is from mine, and they still may not be correct to keep in mind. Um, are like so. Um, and Philip, yeah, maybe you just want to restart the sense hat so the accelerometer is, is taking in the correct information um, for Luke. Um, do you get any output on the console uh, when you when you run this program? Does anything just sort of spit itself out um, when you start it up? Because it might be it's giving you an error message, like a logic error or something like that, uh, as it's trying to run through this program. Restarted, no change. Hmm. Um. What we can do for a real quick, just sort of test for you, Philip, um, is I'm going to put this into a notepad document so that we have it in case anybody needs to review the code. But I am also going to delete all of this stuff. I'm going to delete all of it. Delete, 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 delete. Now we're going to say while true, and we're going to get rid of angle and print Z, and we'll get rid of the rounding. So now if we were to run this, it should just like constantly spit out accelerometer values. So why don't you try this code here 
and see if your accelerometer is actually updating with values. Because if it is, um, then at the very least, we can we can pinpoint it to be a logic error in um, <clears throat> in the the game code as opposed to the accelerometer being borked. For those of you who've got a working program, um, I got a couple of things for you. Just for instance, you could try um, you could try making a new program that does something that you're interested in. Uh, for instance, you could create a, a a die program. So shaking the pie makes the makes the die roll, and you get like a random value between one and x. It could be one and twenty. It could be one and six it could be one in 500 you know whatever you want to do or you could use the accelerometer to sense small movements um you could have it always sense down for gravity you know your call um and uh like i was saying before if you're if you're interested in working on that here and you want to stay in the class in order to get like a little bit of uh, help with that kind of stuff or anything like that then uh, I'm here. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to work on that on your own time. Uh, you can you can head out and uh, just puzzle out that uh, um, puzzle out how that program might work. But yeah, so you you guys, if you if you've if you've got a working program right now, uh, you aren't required to stay here. No problem, Cohen. You have a great weekend. All right, see ya. Hey, uh, Philip, are you getting, uh, no problem, Abigail, have a good one. Uh, let me check that for you. No problem, Caleb. Let me see here. Uh, I believe Mr. Dubik mentions that there is a lab on Thursday. Um, I don't know if that means that there's also going to be one on Saturday, unfortunately. Um, but if you send him or um, Mrs. Dubik an email, they'll be able to get back to you on that. 
so if the arrow is pointing right and I point the Raspberry Pi up, it gives me a green. Uh, that is definitely 100% that your that your accelerometer axes are uh, in some way um, um, wrong. Uh, they're they're misoriented. Um, so definitely check the, uh, the 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 console readout to see what um, what you should have. So let me put this back in my code as an example. Boom. And we'll run this. Oh. So if it's like this, and I rotate it like so, yep, yep, okay. So that that didn't really work. Well, it also wasn't reading the value. Ah, uh, Z is the only one that went between one and zero on yours at all. Huh. And it didn't even go to negative one. Uh, yeah, I think your accelerometer is just not, is not, um, functioning properly, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely, Harry. Uh, scroll down to the very bottom. All right. There you go. Does that, that help you out there, Harry? Oh, jeez. Doesn't if I do that. I'll check it out in a, in a minute here, Mateo. I just want to make sure that everybody's got the code. All right. For the arrows, yeah, sure. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There you go. Oh, sorry, Harry. Um, here. Why don't I put this into the chat box so uh, people can uh, compare whatever whatever part of the code they need to. Oh wait, okay. So that's the first part of the code, and then here's the second part of the code. There we go. I'm getting this error, but I have looked over the line and I can't find anything wrong. Trace back most recent last most recent call last file home pi super game line twenty three in module. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> I guess this might be truncating the numbers because X and Y did get over 0 0.5, but never got to 1.0. Yeah, and it should be rounding as opposed to truncating, which is irritating. Um, maybe it's maybe it's round down on, on 0.5. I need to hit like 0 0.6 in order to... Um, Do the thing. All right, excellent.
All right, you too, Hannah. Enjoy your weekend. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, stop recording here since there isn't really much else.